Here's one of the more unusual items I've gotten to hold, and I think at this point that's really saying something. This is a ceremonial adze from Mount Hagen, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, in Papua New Guinea. An adze is a Stone Age implement, and it's basically an axe, but with the blade oriented, as you see here, instead of with it running along the same line as the handle. And uh, that's more useful for carving type motions. This one, like I said, is from Papua New Guinea, so let's take a look at some of the people from there. Because they may be, pound for pound, the most visually interesting uh, and or expressive people on the planet. We'll see three different types of traditional costumes from them. Here's one. Here comes another. They really vary. I've always been interested in the indigenous culture here. I don't know too much about it, to be honest. I mean, I've watched a few documentaries, read a few articles, that kind of thing. It's definitely a warrior culture. Uh, they have tribal conflicts which continue to this day and can be really brutal. Uh, and you've probably no doubt noticed how striking this image is. But let's get back to the ads. Uh, it's an important item for the native population. It's used to make masks, which are obviously culturally very important, as you saw earlier. Uh, shields and canoes. And now let's take a look at the one in question. Gorgeous wood, got a huge split there. But this is the mechanism you'll see a lot, and these are just like almost absurdly shaped, which is kind of neat. So they're a functional tool for sure, but they're also a prestige item in Papua New Guinea. And obviously you see some tape there <laughs> to protect part of it. And there's the blade. A lot of times the blades still exist, but without the entire implement, so it was pretty cool to be able to see this in its entirety. I think it's much more common to see the opposite. And yes, a sturdy item. A ceremonial one like this, I don't know if it would actually get used. You know, you could have a ceremonial item that's still used in a ceremony, and this one does have a chip on the blade. Now, as far as the ads being used as a weapon at all in Papua New Guinea, it's really hard to say. Like, I saw pictures of a hunter going out, quote-unquote, armed, and he had an item like this on him. Uh, but I think this was mostly a tool that became a really culturally significant prestige item over time. And there's that chip, obviously, that I was talking about earlier. So one thing I haven't mentioned either is that this is one of the most remote places on Earth. Uh, so in that way, it's definitely one of the rarest things I've ever gotten to examine. I'll have to uh, get my hands on some actual weapons from that part of the world at some point. That would be really neat to do a video on. Uh, and speaking of weapons and warfare and the tribal warfare that we mentioned, here are the skeleton warriors. Which brings us back full circle to how visually expressive these people are, uh, but also to the warrior culture and how alive it still is. Uh, a modern traveler there was seeing children getting trained in use of the traditional implements, and the kids were surprised to learn that children in America aren't trained for warfare the way that they are, and it's just such a part of daily life. Well, anyway, that's it for this video. A very unique collectible from a very unique culture. Thanks.